Here's what you need to know before watching The Last Dance documentary. For many NBA fans across the globe, Christmas has come early. We've been locked inside, we've been in isolation for a while now, and this documentary has been pushed forward for a reason. NBA fans have been dying for this. A Michael Jordan, Chicago Bulls documentary? This will be special. Something that brings us joy, entertainment, and should hopefully create a discourse on social media whilst this series continues. This documentary, The Last Dance, is on the 1997-1998 Chicago Bulls. This means that anybody under the age of 21 did not get to witness this team, and even those who were in their mid-20s to early 20s are probably too young to even understand and remember what happened. Many didn't get to watch him live, they didn't get to see the Chicago Bulls live, and we can only see highlights and achievements of what he's done throughout his career. They know about his accomplishments, they know about the trash talking stories and the clutch performances, but they didn't see the entire story unfold, and they didn't see it live. They didn't get to witness the final run. Now obviously if you wanted to learn more and you wanted some more knowledge on the story and what actually happened with the Chicago Bulls, I have two really good books here. One of them is Phil Jackson's book, Eleven Rings, and the other one is just a Michael Jordan book right here. It's a really good book. Both books go really in depth in what happened and they give their perspectives. And obviously they talk about Jerry Krause and Jerry Reinsdorf, which are two important characters into what really ended the Bulls dynasty. But like I said, Jerry Reinsdorf and Jerry Krause, two very important characters, which I'm sure you'll see a lot of in this documentary. But for those that don't know them or didn't get to witness what they did, let's break it down. If you enjoy these types of videos, I'd greatly appreciate if you guys could leave a like to show your support. I really, really would appreciate if you guys could drop a like. It just helps the channel out so much. If you enjoy NBA content every single week, why not hit that subscribe button? We're going to be covering a lot of MJ in the whole documentary, and obviously we cover NBA topics every single week. And of course, let me know what you want to see through the MJ documentary in the comment section down below. What are you expecting out of the whole documentary? Are you excited? Are you not that excited? Do you think it will just be more on Jerry Krause, not really on the Bulls? What are you expecting out of the documentary? Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Here's what you need to know before watching the Michael Jordan Last Dance documentary. I would never say I was cutthroat. I was a competitor. Cutthroat sounds like I'm a villain. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I just, I'm a competitor to a point where if you're my opponent, I don't, if I knock you down, I'm not picking. The first thing that you should know about Michael Jordan's Chicago Bulls before watching this documentary is number one, the Chicago Bulls were legitimately old. Yes, much of the blame I'm sure you'll see in this documentary will be put on Jerry Krause, who was the general manager of the Chicago Bulls at the time, and basically throughout Jordan's entire career, except for his rookie season. Of course, I'm an NBA fan above all else. I wish he wasn't the reason they split up, and we'll find out more in this documentary, but I do have one thing to say before you watch this documentary. Jerry Krause knew the Bulls were getting old, and I don't think Jerry Reinsdorf, who was the owner of the Chicago Bulls, gets enough blame. He was the owner of the Bulls, and at the end of the day, he has the control. He was also part of the reason why the Chicago Bulls split up. He let Jerry Krause destroy the dynasty, but I will give Krause this. As we all know, MJ was a proven winner. He always strove to be the greatest, and one of the biggest accomplishments that many NBA fans still marvel at today is the fact that he went 6 for 6. He never lost in the NBA Finals. He had that mentality where unless he was defeated, then he was the greatest. The thing is, he never really lost, which meant that he was always the greatest, and still is to this day. The Chicago Bulls management though, they saw different opinions. They saw Michael Jordan getting old, Dennis Rodman aging, and they didn't see a future in Scottie Pippen. I promise you that you will see Jerry Krause take much of the blame for the Chicago Bulls demise, but maybe he was somewhat right to say that this season would be the last of Phil Jackson, which in turn meant the last year of Michael Jordan, and that meant Scottie Pippen, and obviously Dennis Rodman. Like I said before, they were legitimately aging. But because it was our third straight year trying to win the championship, everybody was exhausted. And that's what I remember, um, just the fatigue, and Dennis was, uh, you know, he was all over the map. Oh, he yeah. did. We some days didn't show up for practice. <laughs> we didn't know where he was. It, it just felt like the end, and, and but we found a way to... Dennis Rodman was 36 years old this season, which would be the fifth oldest player in the league if he played today. And in all honesty, he never played the same after the 1997-1998 season. Michael Jordan, look, he was the greatest. He was still Mike, and you could never count him out. But father time eventually catches up to everyone. Could he still have won a championship the next season with just Scottie Pippen? 
and a 37-year-old Dennis Rodman who was contemplating retiring, they would have probably faced up against the San Antonio Spurs team who was built on dominant big men, when their team wasn't necessarily built around defending big men, but rather dominating with MJ and Scotty. I honestly don't know, nobody has the answer to this, but Michael Jordan was turning 35 years old the next year. Lastly, you had Scottie Pippen, who was 32 years old, which isn't too old, but without Michael Jordan, and of course Phil Jackson, he was still solid, but after all, just a great sidekick to build a team around, but not lead your team. You saw the next season that he declined from a 19 point player to a 14 and a half point player, even playing more minutes per game. Now, of course, this could be due to a number of factors, the fact that he was playing for a new team with new players who could actually score the ball like Hakeem Olajuwon and Charles Barkley, not just MJ, which may have meant that he didn't need to score as much and he could do other things on the court. But either way, he was turning 33 the next year and declining. Look, I'm not saying what happened was right, and you'll most likely see in the documentary that the Bulls wanted to keep going. Jordan wanted to keep winning, but Jerry Krause said no. Was Krause right for doing that? No, he probably wasn't. They probably could have tried to compete for another championship. But what people need to understand is that the Chicago Bulls team was aging. 36 years old Dennis Rodman, a 34 year old Michael Jordan, and a 32 year old Scottie Pippen. I'm not saying the Bulls would have won, nor am I saying they would have lost, but maybe it would have been bad for Jordan had he lost in an NBA Finals and the record have been 6-1. and one. As you can see, the Bulls management was thinking in the long term, as a franchise. This was the mindset of the management of the Chicago Bulls, which I think needs to be noted. Obviously the Bulls had just come off an NBA Championship, and that was the mindset that the Bulls had. They were still champions. But Jerry Krause already knew that this Bulls team was breaking up, even before they won the championship that season. And this was because the management had agreed that they would not bring Phil Jackson back, which meant that if Phil Jackson doesn't come back, Jordan doesn't come back, Rodman leaves, and Scottie Pippen gets traded. So with management making it clear to the Bulls that this would be the last and final run, and Phil Jackson not coming back, this was the reason why the players allowed for access for games and trainings to be filmed. They already knew it was the last and final run, and that's why the end documentary is named The Last Dance, named after what Phil Jackson called the 1997-1998 season. You know, the beginning of the season, it, it basically started when uh, Jerry Krause told Phil that, you know, he can go 82-0 and 0 and we, we, he would never get the chance to come back. And, you know, knowing that I was, I, I married myself to him, you know, obviously, and, and if he wasn't going to be a coach, then, you know, obviously I wasn't going to play. So. Phil started off the year by saying this is the last dance and, and we played it that way. But in terms of Jerry Krause and his management, you can sort of visualize why Jerry Krause wanted to start rebuilding. He did realize that this team was aging significantly. And I think that's something that's also important to know. Number two, Michael Jordan will open up. We finally get to see the real Mike. Michael Jordan as a savage. Michael Jordan that the stories tell us. Michael Jordan, the killer on the court, but also the trash talking beast that we never really got to witness outside of what other players would tell us. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Michael, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan is the greatest. This won't be like the media interview Michael Jordan or the guest host Michael Jordan, who stays calm, cordial, and just tells his story very peacefully. This is about the true, cold-blooded killer mentality that Michael Jordan had, and the fans have read about, they've watched films about, but never have been able to really see and witness with their own eyes. He's already come out and said with a quote that people will think I'm a horrible person once they watch the Last Dance documentary. And in another interview on The Dan Patrick Show, Richard Roper said this, Michael's not always been the most candid and forthcoming and, you know, honest guy when it comes to interviews. He, you know, he always kept this as kind of a close guard. So it's really refreshing to see him open up on so many levels in this documentary. Of course, we will get to see him go in on GM Jerry Krause, as he was once quoted as saying, It's not just players who win championships, organizations do. Krause has then said he was misquoted, and the actual quote was that players and coaches alone don't win championships, organizations win championships. Without the word alone, it would have been an arrogant statement to make. But the statement I made was alone. I said players and coaches alone don't win, and that's true. And I think Michael took that very, very hard. 
This quote obviously stayed with the rest of Jordan's career, and it even came up during MJ's Hall of Fame speech, and obviously it really affected Mike. You know, Jerry Krause is right there, and Jerry's not here. Obviously, I don't, you know, I don't know who inv invited him. I didn't, but uh, don't try to put the organization above the players, because at the end of the day, the players still got to go out there and perform. You guys got to pay us, but I still got to go out and play. <laughs> Obviously, it had a massive impact on the relationship between Kraus and Jordan, and it's going to be interesting to see what Jordan says, what he really thinks, which will be portrayed in this documentary. You know he'll go in, and you know he'll really speak his mind, and that's going to be something that's very fun to watch. And number three, you will see Jerry Kraus cop a lot of criticism in this documentary. But you have to remember, he also did a very good job building this team up. It will be made into a Jerry Krause vs Michael Jordan feud, even more than we've seen and that we know already. But I think it's very important to remember that Jerry Krause was the one who traded for Scottie Pippen from Seattle. Jerry Krause who was the one that brought in Horace Grant. Then when they lost Horace Grant, he brought in Dennis Rodman. Jerry Krause was the one that recommended that Jerry Reinsdorf look into Phil Jackson as an assistant coach and then later as the head coach. Well, he found Phil Jackson coaching in the Continental Basketball Association. Jerry Krause brought in Steve Kerr as a replacement after they lost Paxton. Tony Kukoc, Rodman, Ron Harper, athletic, long-armed, multiple position players. Jerry was kind of ahead of his time because that's how the NBA is played now. Jordan and Pippen were the only two players that were on the second three-peat team that were also on the first three-peat team, which shows that Jerry Krause was a big part of the Chicago Bulls' success. He was a great GM, which can't be forgotten. What he was able to do as a GM was, um, it was pretty magnificent. He helped assemble one of the greatest teams to ever play on the NBA court. Hey, don't get me wrong, I'm not on Jerry Krause's side here. I think he made some horrible decisions, like telling Phil Jackson, Krause said, I don't care if we go 82 and 0, Phil's not coming back. Like, that's just crazy and ridiculous. They were on bad terms, which meant that without Phil, meant no Michael, and obviously meant no Scotty or Rodman. And what's crazy is that all this was just an ego thing. Jerry Krause had a huge ego, and he wanted to be known for it. He wanted to be given more credit for the success of the Chicago Bulls. I think because of the hatred between Phil Jackson and Jerry Krause, and because Jordan hated him, you'll see that his teammates will also hate Krause, talking from their perspective, a player's perspective. Krause will cop a lot of bashing, but he actually did a great job of building up this list, and creating a talented roster for many years, which also shouldn't go unrecognised. Despite the ending of it all, I don't think this documentary will cover what Krauss did in a positive light, but I think it's important that you remember and that you be reminded what he did before watching this series as well. With that said, I hope you guys have a little bit of insight into Jerry Krauss and the whole Michael Jordan Chicago Bulls of the 1997-1998 season. If you are excited for this documentary, let me know by hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new, and telling me down below in the comment section. If you enjoy the video, I'd greatly appreciate your support, and let me know what you think. I'll catch you guys in my next one. I am out.